Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to my last Dragonair Silent Gods video, at least for a little while. If you didn't know, Dragonair is wrapping up in the US in just a couple months, and my account obviously is an American account. So until I'm abroad and I can make a new account, or until they restart everything in the US, it's gonna be a bit of a hiatus. This obviously, if you've been keeping up with my videos for the past four, I guess, before this, it's been coming for a little while. It was uh, big news. So this is gonna be kind of an interesting video. I'm gonna encourage like all my viewers to watch this, not just people interested in Dragonair. So I'm gonna speak to what I think this game did really well and what I think this game did really poorly, not to criticize it, but maybe to shed light on how it can continue to succeed in the future in all the other regions and maybe when it returns to America and also how other games could kind of see the great stuff it did and then also see where it fell short and maybe glean something from that. But first, by the way, how the heck are you? I'm Vestidious. Welcome to this video. But first, let's start with the summons, baby. If this is gonna be the last time I'm on this account for a minute or I don't know when I'll be on, maybe I'll be on tomorrow, who knows? Let's rip everything we have absolutely got. So how much is that? I've got 22 of these healer like die. These are the legendary summons, the sacred summons, the greatest summons. Can we get at least one legendary? I sure hope so. Could we get two? Could we get three? There's only one way to find out. And I will tell you guys, in short, I do think Dragonair is a very good game. I'm going to stand by that. For me, it has been like the perfect side game for several months now. I've been playing for over three months and uh, I have three and a half months now. And I've, I've really, really have appreciated that. Uh, a key thing I would want to highlight in uh, this whole thing is the issues currently are only in America. So if you're interested in playing, if you've liked what you've seen, if you're interested, if at all your interest is piqued, the link will be in the description to download the game as well as the top and comment. It is available on PC, mobile, Epic Games, and Steam. We've got all this stuff to pull and I wanna give my big overarching thoughts. So let's get into it. Fastidious. Fastidious. All right, my friends, no time like the present. Let's absolutely go. 22 of these, but first, it wouldn't be Dragonair without the horn. And you know I've saved up four of these bad boys. I did pull one legendary ever from the horn, but the horn is like what I hate about Gotcha, right? And what kind of irked me a little bit from the get with Dragonair, on top of all the things I love, good gameplay, beautiful design, unique take on the Gotcha genre. I hate how it's built as this D&D &D thing, but the dice are not real. Like if it's a 20 sided die, I want a one in 20 opportunity to land on each number. And that is not how this goes. Let's click range and you'll see, they show you an animation of a die spinning and it's not a die spinning. It, it like it, it very, 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 very rarely and certainly not one in 20 will be a 20. And then certainly very rarely and certainly not five out of 20, AKA one fourth, Will it be 16, 17, 18, 19, or 20? Over 15 to get those epic heroes, and then 20 to get the legendary. Uh, this is something that has always irked me. Dungeons and Dragons is very cool. It's actually a game I've never played, but I've watched a lot of Dungeons and Dragons content. Shout out to Dimension 20, if anyone watches watch that. And you'll see these things do not roll as a proper D20. Uh, I wish they did, and you actually sincerely could wake up every day and have two chances to maybe ha have a one in 20 chance to hit the legendaries. That's not what we're really cooking with here. Let's do, let's finish off on fire on this one. What do you say? Actually, we have one more after, um, but that's definitely something that's not fun. And they always, they tease you. It flashes 20 as if, oh, it maybe was about to roll 20 and it doesn't, it doesn't, right? And I don't mind that. Like it's probably like a one in 100 or one in 200 chance. That's fun. That's fun and that's fine. But then don't give me a D20 to look at while I get disappointed. This never stopped disappointing me. Like this never stopped getting my hopes up, hopes up and stopped disappointing. You see you flash a 19, flash a 17. You're all, I, uh, honestly, twice ever, I pulled one epic and one legendary, twice ever for me through over th three and a half months playing, did it not land on 14 or under. And usually it's even lower, lower than 10. Uh, here's one of our flying dwarves, big thing in the game. Let's get into the summons, baby, and then let's get into my thoughts. I'm doing all five pulls. I'm not gonna to yank you guys around. We'll do two singles at the end, obviously. Um, this is something I always thought was cool. The five pulls feels like your summons last longer in this game. 
Um, as a content creator, that's nice. You can make a meal out of it a bit more, which obviously is something we do. But I don't know. These summons are so hard to save up. They're so rare, especially as a free to play. I've been 100% free to play the whole time. No content creator awards, no nothing. Brand new hero. Wow, Olgon. That's he looks incredible. The designs in this game, we'll get to it, but they're brilliant. Uh, but yeah, it just it makes it feel like. It's in other games, you save up, you save up, and then it's a couple 10 rippers and it's gone. This way, at least we get to click the special button five times. Can we get a gold? Can we get one final gold? I did get a gold like two or three days ago when I did pulls. Double purple, that's cool, double epic. But can we get one more gold for the temporary road? Shaltar, is he not a dupe? Is he new? We've got obviously Rava as a dupe. Uh, Rob, I've pulled a million times. No, Shaltar is brand new. We're pulling all these kind of like humanoid bulls and rams and whatever right now. These Minotaur looking guys. That is excellent. We got two more fibers. Don't worry. We can scratch that gotcha itch. Give me gold. Come on. Nor not. There's Dubok. He's handsome. Yamira. Hegio. Hegio is a very good epic. You're going to run the Radiance kind of team. Hegio is very nice. Our final five pull for the foreseeable future. Come on now, baby. Come on. And at least we got an epic. I think the pity is one in seven. So we have beaten it every time. But no, we did not get a legendary. I do have the two single pulls. You never know. Kaylee's interesting looking hero. Some of the rare heroes look really great in this game. Yagnats. <laughs> if you've kept up with me at all, and if it is you, let me know in the comments. I think he's, I know for a fact he's my most pulled epic. It's by a mile. I think I've pulled him like nine times and he's free to play. You get him for free on day one. They did buff him. So if you're going to run a summoner team, he's he's good now. Like not amazing, but he's good. Uh, but wow, it's insane how much they pump into me. It's great in a new season because you can get all these essence of creation to buy artifacts. But boy, oh boy, two singles. And then uh, that's it for the gotcha, baby. That is it. So, are, are one of you folks going to turn gold for me? No, sir. Can't even look. Ulor. Summon again. Come on. Come on. Let us end on a bang. Come on, Dragonair. Telling gods. No, that's how it had to be. It had to be. This is what I do. <laughs> I pulled very few. Uh, even with all the great resources, free resources they gave us like halfway through my time this game, we've pulled. This was free. This was from the horns. So, and this was free. So, I pulled one, two three just the other day four five six legendaries and i will tell you one two these two were guaranteed on season two this was just the other day so it was really only three the whole time uh it is what it is though baby and i will say it was really easy uh i shouldn't say really easy i had a lot of help from amazing other creators it was very doable to succeed without the legend of heroes obviously not if you want to be super super pvp focused but uh it was it was nice so let's talk about Let's talk about what I didn't like, and then let's talk about what I did like, and then we'll say farewell, at least for now, to Dragonair, Silent Gods in America, at least for me. And what I have to tell you, they are not, they're, they're closing the server right for now, but they're archiving all the accounts. So that's a lot of data. They're not deleting them. So that shows there is a glimmer of hope. Could be coming back in the States and we might all get these beautiful accounts back. So what did I not like? You know what I'm gonna say the seasons i think it, it the seasons are a cool thing you know you see in other games like path of exile so i know like uh diablo 4 stuff like that but in a game in a game where it's all about your account like what is my account's name big fasty right it's all about your account and growing that account and building it into something that you love and blah 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 right big fasty there you go the big fasty account this account th that is gotcha right you grind you grind you grind there's no end in sight but over time, brick by brick, stone by stone, you're building something with all the crazy resources you're grinding out to gather and accrue, and you have your big stockpile. And before you know it, you have a mighty account. Because we have seasons and because you lose a ton of really essential things, you're really only keeping your heroes and your artifacts, it hurts. You lose all your gear. You lose all your runes. All your heroes are back to level one. I mean, it took me, I had over 40 heroes uh, above level 90, you know, maxed out heroes and could have done more. So much goblin farming from season one right down the drain. For me, it didn't like kill the game for me, but of course for other people it would. Of course it would because it, it makes it easy to leave. You know, <laughs> just let's zoom out and talk about a business model for a second. You want people to feel 
the sunk cost fallacy. You want them to feel like they put a lot of love and time and effort into their account. So how could they leave it? Well, this game made it a little too easy because every every 90 days they said, hey, we're going to undo almost everything in case you want to head out. And unfortunately, at least it seems in America, obviously there's also a geopolitical issue. It seems a lot of people headed out. It did. The season thing is cool, but in these games where, like I said, you're grabbing every little thing, min-maxing every little thing, building your stockpile up, 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 uh, to have most of that stockpile taken away from you every quarter of a year, every three months, didn't feel good to people. Also, you guys know for me, the PvP thing is not the most important thing in the world, but for a lot of people it is. And this game is so PvP. So what do I mean by that? We have like Tag Team Arena, we have Grand Gladiator Arena, we have Live Arena, all that stuff, right? But on top of that, everything has a leaderboard you know there's constant tournaments with a leaderboard uh if we go to the clepsidra trial thing eventually when you go here and you would click on this later on in the season we would have uh or maybe we already have some glory rankings going look at this like everything is constantly 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 ranked full stop that is just how the game works for a lot of people especially those that don't spend tons and tons of money or even those that do it really hurts to have a lot of that progress taken away and feel like you got to claw your way back to the top I think for sure this worked for some people. Rue Greasy loved it. He loved the chase at the end of every season and he was flourishing. Rue Greasy is amazing at this game. It fit him perfectly like a glove. But for many gotcha veterans or people that are inclined to enjoy the gotcha, the gotcha genre, it's all about your daily tasks chipping away and over time you see your slow, steady progression. And before you know it, you feel like a king because you've built this incredible account, this incredible roster. The seasons thing, undid undid all of that for a lot of people and for me it did undo a chunk of that i think decidedly that was the big issue it, it really was let's let's be completely completely honest that being said what did it do well they obviously bit off a lot of things you know there's like these almost like afk elements to the fights in this game there's proper strategy there's tile placement then you have a tower defense mode you have tons of pvp like me versus you arena lots of bosses they took bits and pieces from all different kind of games we have an open world map you can walk around in and explore it's truly unique stuff right um and they they combined all of it and i think for the most part they did a good job and i think if they could have rolled a lot of it out maybe slower and you didn't have the season reset, it could have worked even better. What do I know? That's just my two cents. But that being said, what they did was very ambitious. And I think a lot of it they actually did pull off. And as you can see, it is a beautiful game. Undeniably, even like the little versions of your characters, the ones you choose to run around with, do look really nice. And then when you go in, it is these, these are beautiful designs. Some of the best you'll ever see in a gotcha game, full stop ever right so solid ambitious unique game design combined with really excellent aesthetics there was a lot to enjoy here there really was cool cool graphics as well on the moves and everything very unique heroes lots of nice unique types a million different synergies you can do i will say one thing i loved about the seasons probably the one the only thing i truly loved i liked that the season pairs reset each season so like for example season one i had frost and necrosis pa paired right? I had poison and fire paired and I had lightning and radiance paired. That all kind of shifted, right? So if you can think of these guys here, these ones all shifted counterclockwise. I, I think that is cool. And it opens up a lot of new like, ooh, I can rediscover this hero because now they fit into this dual affinity kind of comp. Really cool stuff. And again, that goes back to the game design and the really brilliant visual design. And that's what I'd say was the big coup. And I think that would be, if, if I was another game looking at Dragonair and being like, what did they do great? What didn't they do? Well, I'd be weary of the seasons thing for many of the reasons I just said and a lot more I could go on about further. But I also would be like, wow, they were really ambitious with their design, with a lot of the game design things they tried to do, incorporating all these different things. Some worked, some didn't. But that level of ambition, I think, should be admired by other games. And clearly it did capture the hearts of many. Like Ivy Lee Gaming absolutely adored this game. Her husband, Odd, one as well. Like I said, Rue Greasy. I know H-Dubs really like this game. There's a lot of people that really enjoy this stuff. I enjoyed it pretty darn well. That's what I would say. For me, it was an excellent side game. It's sad for me to see it go. I guess that's how I kind of wanted to end it. And I will say it's kind of nice that I didn't pull any legendaries because let's be honest, I had a rough go of it. There is no like total triple S blah, 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 game changer anywhere. The closest I got with was Voresh, who I didn't pull until season two. And he's just an epic. Uh, so awesome stuff in general for my account. I had enough to push. I had my little wild team, but I did have an authentically free to play experience. 
where I always felt like a have not, not a have. And that's that's gotcha for it, you baby. It was a lot of fun playing Dragonair all these months. It's been a lot of fun seeing their growth. Dragonair came out on my birthday last September. I actually played it that day. I've had my eye on it for a long time. Ivy's always been hyping it up. So it's been cool to see, at least in my little world, the up, the down, the everything in between. I deeply thank Dragonair for sponsoring me uh, these past few months. It's been huge for me in my real life and for, I think, you guys, if you like my stuff, it's enabled me to branch out have a lot more time and freedom to do a lot of things. And uh, I cannot thank Dragonair Silent Gods enough for that. So guys, if if you wanna give it a shot and you're not in America, definitely use my link in the description and the top pinned comment. I encourage you to do so. It's worth a shot. And from everything I'm hearing internally, the little bit I get as like a on the periphery content creator in this world, uh, it seems like it's, 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 it's all steam ahead, right? They're just going to keep trudging along. It's strictly a U.S. issue currently. So I think for all other regions, which let's be honest, the U.S. is a big market, but that's still the majority of players in the majority of the world. I think you're in a decent spot. So you can be slightly hesitant if you want, but I don't think there's actually anything besides the, the big thing of leaving the U.S. market that you really have too much to worry about. So the link will be in the description and the top in comment. It's available on Epic Games, Steam, PC, and mobile. Farewell from me, Facidious, to Dragon Air Silent Gods, at least for the time being. Share it with your mother, guys, and I'll see you soon. Fastidious.